Hey everyone, CNC Keith here in this video. I'm gonna demonstrate how to measure backlash of a machine tool axis. This is a method that I've been using for a very long time and I wanna share it with you all. So I have a thousandths indicator with a one inch travel sitting here on a Noga stand and we're gonna measure the backlash on the X axis of this M400 Quip bridge board. And I have the indicator approximately parallel with the x-axis and perpendicular to the z and lined up about in the middle of the quill. And the very first thing you want to do is make sure you have the backlash compensation feature in CNC 12 all zeroed out because we don't want CNC 12 to be compensating for backlash when we're trying to measure it. Alrighty, let's get going here. What I want to do is switch to continuous slow and jog the indicator into the quill. And I'm gonna keep jogging to take up any sort of uh, flex or play and use up enough of the travel, the indicator that I can back up and it won't accidentally come off the quill. And once I've done that, I'm gonna to switch to incremental times 100. And on this machine, that's 0.01 inch. So 10 one thousandths of an inch. It is very important now to continue to press the X positive button in my case, to continue to move the indicator into the quill. And each time I hit that, it's moving 0.01 inches. And the whole purpose of what I'm doing right now is to simply keep going until it lands on an easy number to read and remember. So let's do that. Look at that, we're sitting right on 11. So I'm gonna write down 11 on a piece of paper here so I remember where I'm currently at. Now, moving the same direction, I'm gonna hit this jog button 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then what I'm gonna do is hit, I'm gonna turn around and hit the minus jog button ten times as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, look where we ended up here. It did not come back to eleven. This is the backlash that is in this mechanical system on this machine. So we started at 11 and we ended at five and a half. So there's about four and a half thousandths of backlash on this particular machine. So let's just go ahead and do it again. Here's a couple tips for you. You want to measure the backlash where you most often use the machine. And on an email, that's nice right here in the middle of the travel, which is where I'm at. So let's go measure it again. You want to measure it a bunch of times until you get a consistent backlash number. And then we'll enter that number into CNC 12 to have it automatically compensate for that number. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is take it off of incremental and I'm gonna back completely out until it's off the quill. And then I'm gonna turn around and run the indicator back into the quill, engage, keep going, switch the incremental, keep going in the same direction, hit it a few times until it's an easy number to remember. So there we are practically right on 30. So writing down 30. Moving in the same direction, I'm gonna hit the X positive button 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. <clears throat> Does this number mean anything? No, don't even pay attention to that number. We're measuring the difference in movement, not just one side. We're, now we're gonna turn around the exact same number of times that I hit this in the opposite direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Where are we at? We started at 30. Now we're at 34 and a half. Okay, so I'm getting a consistent 0 0.0045. Now I can enter that number in the CNC 12 backlash compensation number for this axis. Okay, let's talk uh, about the results a little bit. That's a lot of backlash, four and a half thousandths for a, a milling machine. So this could be resulting on a machine like this from a number of different places, but the most likely cause for my years of experience of fixing problems like that is there's a set of contact bearings here, angular contact bearings that hold the screw onto the machine. Most likely what's going on is the entire screw is slopping up and down when the motor changes direction 
inside this axis. A lot of people will jump to the conclusion that it is a uh, ball nut problem. The ball nut is usually the best, most reliable thing of this system. It's usually always this. And then secondary is the attachment point of the ball nut to the axis. Make sure that that's not loose. Those are easy things to check. These angular contact bearings are sometimes match sets and sometimes they have shins in them and they require a nut to tension them. So that's where you want to look in this particular system because I'd really like to see this number smaller. So it's time to improve the mechanical system, run the test again to get the best machining results. But if you're in a hurry, you can put four and a half thousandths inside a CNC 12, which is under config and machine motor right in here is where I would put that number, save it turn it on and off, rehome it, and then you can run this test again and see where you're at. Okay, let's measure the backlash on the y-axis. I've turned the indicator parallel to the y, same thing, perpendicular to quill, roughly in the middle. And you wanna make sure that you uh, have no numbers in CNC 12 backlash compensation. They're all zeroed. We don't wanna be trying to measure it while it's compensating for it. And I'm going to be on slow, continuous and I'm going to bring the quill into the indicator. Okay, nice little bit of contact going on. I switch over to incremental, moving in the same direction, very critical. I'm just going to hit this a few times until it lands on a number that's easy to memorize. You might be asking me, why am I doing this? Why don't I just grab that ring? Well, I don't want to turn this ring. I don't even want to touch the system because I don't want to introduce any air into it. So Boy, we're practically on 81. We're just like a tenth or two um, on the uh, high side of 81. Let's use that. So I'm gonna hit this button right here 10 times in the same direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Don't pay attention to that number, it's meaningless. Now I turn around and go back the other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And there you go. We're at like 82 and two tenths, something like that. Let's do it one more time. So I'm just gonna go over to uh, slow continuous and we're gonna back out of here and we're gonna re-come back in and re-engage, re-switch to incremental, continue to jog into it in the same direction. Boy, there we are. It looks like 48. Let's get the camera to focus. We're right on 48. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it's coming back to 49 in like a tenth. So I think there's about um, 12 tenths in this. So 0 0.0012. Let's give that a try. And let's save that number. And we're going to get on continuous. Jog away. Jog in. Switch over to incremental. Now I have 12 tenths of compensation turned on and I'm gonna do the same procedure. Jog into it, incremental jog into it until it lands on a number that's easy to memorize. Boy, we're practically right on five right there. Let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bam, came right back to five. So there's a great example of having about uh, 12 tenths of backlash, which is really good for a CNC knee mill of this age on the Y-axis. Usually the Y-axis has the most amount of lash on these machines. And then putting that number in the backlash compensation and measuring it and see that the control actually made up for that thou and that couple tenths of backlash, which is really awesome. So it's, it's it's important with this method to use the times 100 because if you use times one or times 10, or if you use some other method where you might grab the hand wheel and shake it back and forth, um, those methods using finer numbers are more prone to error. You need to move a fair amount of distance, turning around and coming back at a fairly hard, fast speed. So if you use the tenths here, either on the MPG, 
you're operating in, in the zone of the mechanical system where stiction comes into play or you might have wind up or a little springiness to the system. And it's hard to measure a really good, accurate, true lash number of the overall mechanical system when you're doing that. So that's why I'm using times 100 and incremental. The only reason why I'm using incremental is it's easy to move away and back a known, you know, a commanded distance that's the same. That's why I'm doing it 10 times. The reason why I'm doing it 10 times and not just once or twice is I want to move more than 0 0.01 away to really pick up the overall true backlash of the y-axis on this system. I want to get away from that stiction zone, which you certainly would be operating in if you were down here on times one or times 10. So this is my method, tried and true, that I've used for many, many years. And um, there are other more sophisticated ways to do it with the G-code program set up. Um, but this is the way I can do it with a simple thousands indicator. And all I need is a running CNC control. And you can see the CNC 12 effectively just took that lash number, took that lash right out of the system. So that's awesome. And then you would just do the same thing for Z, just turn the indicator upside down and come down on Z. This has uh, the old Elrod quill kit on it, which is one of the best quill kits on the market, but they still will have four or five thousandths of backlash. That's just the nature of the beast, the way that the screw is connected to the quill. Other quill kits are way worse. So that's it in a nutshell. That's my backlash method that I've been using forever and wanted to share with you. And hopefully that clears up any confusion on the methods that you were using. Hey everyone, I invite you to create a build thread on Centroid's free CNC technical support forum. That's centroidcncforum.com. Let me give you an example. If I had an acorn, I would enter into the acorn forum and then click on create a new post. There's a great post down here called what is a build thread and describes the advantages and why you would want to take the time to create a build thread. Here's a nice example of somebody's photo album of their particular machine tool project. When you create a build thread, you'll get answers directly from Centroid employees as well as Centroid power users on the forum.